Hello, everyone. Today, thank you for joining us for Essentials of Nonprofit Marketing and Communication. Uh, it's really funny because I was explaining to someone that there's a difference between the word communication without an S and communications with an S. And what we mean here with communications with an S is this is a process. This is a strategy. And so what my dear friend, Lori Shepard, and my other dear friend, uh, Sarah Ratliff, who's going to take me to Puerto Rico, will be talking about is the strategy and how there are so many elements to this strategy and none of them can go ignored. Um, this, the strategy that we're talking about is how to boost your organization's profile, impact, and funding prospects. And by doing this strategy correctly, just as we would any other strategy, such as a fund development strategy or strategic planning or a board strategy, by doing this correctly, it can increase everything as it relates to your image and your impact. Next slide, please. This is a familiar slide to all of you. So we just wanna make sure that you're familiar with the whole Zoom platform. And I guess after about three years, you are. So I'm just gonna let you look over this really briefly and make sure that the name is the way you want it. And if you wanna change that name, this is how to do it. Yeah, it's really helpful for us to be able to see who comes um, for you to change your name. So that's, that's super helpful for us. Okay, great. All right. So we are recording, which is really wonderful because after this session has ended, you'll be able to go to the A Model Built on Faith website, which is amodelbuiltonfaith.org, and you'll be able to see this recording. So a little bit about our team. Our team is growing. Our team is changing. Our team is younging up, and I am so happy about that. And so there's a lot of vitality here. There's a lot of energy here in this. And, um, and we have one more team member who insists on being in the background, and we keep bringing her to the fore, and that's Sandra Alexander, who is, uh, is, is still with us, working very hard, daily and orchestrating so many things in the background to keep everything moving forward. Many of you have already seen presentations by OCUR's new executive director, and we're so excited about him, Dr. David Franklin. Uh, David also is a pastor, so he understands faiths and nonprofit organizations equally well. Plus, he's a nonprofit strategist, so we are very blessed to have David at the helm as OCUR's new executive director. Um, I'm a lead consultant with the organization and with FAITHS. You all know Michelle Miles Chambers, who is the director of FAITHS. She's with the San Francisco Foundation. And Michelle, as you know, is part of that initial group that decided that this was an important thing to have. And she has worked for years in developing it to where it is now. And she will be with this organization to continue to develop it into the future. My wonderful friend, Saran Stokes, is the program assistant for FAITHS, uh, an amazing young woman who has worked in this arena for a while now, even, even though she has um, been with FAITHS for, I guess, about two years or so. Um, and then Shai Alderman, we are so happy that Shai is working with us to keep things moving forward. And you can see Shai live up there. <laughs> Hi, Shai. Um, and then Simone Stokes, who is a key member of the team as well. Next slide. And so this is such a pleasure to introduce my dear friend for many years, Lori Shepard. Lori is so good at uh, public relations strategy, 
communications, anything dealing with image and impact. She has worked with my organization, the Bogan Group and Dream On Publishing. I have not been the best student, but she's been the best teacher. And so um, it's just wonderful to have her. I want to tell you a little bit about her. So Lori Shepard is the owner of 25 Seconds PR. She is an Oakland native who grew up in Berkeley and her heartstrings are wrapped around Berkeley. As a matter of fact, she's writing an extraordinary book right now, which is a fiction, nonfiction about Berkeley, who touches on the some of the historical aspects of, of Berkeley and growing up in Berkeley. Her business was founded in 2000, 2014, 2014, after spending a career working in corporate marketing and communications. And there, our, our backgrounds intersect. And so I'm very appreciative of what it has taken for Lori to really expand her breadth of knowledge to continue working with corporations, but also nonprofits without losing her focus on the importance of each one. While starting 24, 25 Seconds PR, Lori has managed public relations of various businesses and nonprofits, including large nationals, global tech companies, emerging authors and startups. Uh, Lori has extensive knowledge of public relations, marketing, and communication strategies, which covers a myriad of industries, including educational tech platforms to food and restaurant, personal brands, health tech, iCloud enterprise systems, education tech platforms, business services, and more. It's so wonderful to have a woman of color and a personal friend who has this depth of knowledge in this arena, and you are going to have the benefit of that today. In the arena of nonprofit and faith-based organizations, Lori has a long successful track record in training and coaching leaders. I'm one of those that she has coached and employing solid business strategies to build their capacities and systems to strengthen our communities. And so it is my great chill producing pleasure to introduce my friend, Lori Shepard. Lori, over to you. Thank you so much. I want to, uh -uh, I want to um, just say that was, that was an amazing introduction, first of all, and I appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate the work that um, occurs doing and has been doing for quite a long time. I am going to pull up my slides here in just a second. And I want to kind of get started on the, the process. Before I do that, though, I was just curious, and I'm going to get my stuff going here. I'm curious to know, and if you guys don't mind um, letting me know, what uh, what is your organization, the name of your organization? If you just are so inclined to just enter into the chat, I would appreciate that. It would just be nice to have some, some knowledge about uh, some of the organizations that are here today. Anyone want to? Type in in the chat. Jamco Foundation in Oakland. Okay, welcome Jamco, J-A-M-K-O Foundation. New College Berkeley. We've got, we've got Mo Better Digital. We've got Jesus Chavez from Central Legal. We've got National Latino Peace Officers Association. Uh, we've got Dream Mom Publishing, yay! San Francisco Foundation, yes. Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church, outstanding. Okay, and we've got Memorial Tabernacle Church, Oakland, Priority Africa Network. Excellent, 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 excellent. Women's Centers International. Afro-American Cultural and Historical Society, Heritage Music Foundation. All right. It's Steve from NLPOA. 
Okay. All right. So we've had a wide variety of folks here and, and a wide variety of organizations that are being represented. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I am going to get into our presentation and let me do that here. And there we go. I'm going to share with you. And Give me a second, guys. Here we go. Does everyone see my screen? All right. I, I, I. Okay. So hello and welcome to our presentation today, which is you're going to make a big impression. Here's how. It's a workshop on the essentials of nonprofit marketing and communications. And what I want to show you is how to improve your chances of making a big impression to the funders, to the donors, to the volunteers, to the partners, to the community to any of the people or entities that are important to your organization, your nonprofit, um, that matter the most to you, that's what this, this um, presentation is all about. So this is gonna be as interactive as possible with some engaging presentations. So don't, don't be shy, feel free to participate by asking questions. Um, if anything doesn't make sense or if it's unfamiliar, feel free to ask as many questions as you need to until you are satisfied. Um, if for any reason I don't have the answer or, or uh, someone else doesn't have the answer, um, we, will, uh, we will make note of it and, and follow up with you. But I think this should be pretty thorough. That, that was what the intention is. Um, just a friendly reminder um, while we're waiting for others to come in. Um, I know your microphone is already off. Uh, that's, that's mainly just to keep uh, reduce the background noise, um, but please feel free at any time during this uh, presentation to um, place your questions in the chat box. Um, and if you're having any te technical difficulties, please just type them in the chat box as well. Um, the operations manager, who is Shai Alderman, who you met earlier, she is here standing by, or they are, they are here standing by and can help you. Um, questions about the presentation will be answered during the, the questions portion of the presentation. So there will be some periods of time where, where you can um, be prompted to ask questions. You can ask, ask them on uh, through the microphone. So that's, those will be coming up. Um, or you can type in your questions in the chat box, whichever makes sense for you. So... The learning agenda. What we're going to discuss this morning is the power of storytelling using your organization's website, using social media, using blogging. I also realize it would be entirely remiss of me not to mention artificial intelligence, AI. So we're going to discuss one small aspect of, of it in the presentation as well towards the end. And if we have time, we'll have a little short dem demo of, of, the of one particular tool. So um, Turning to the, the material in the subhead of this presentation, it reads, the essentials of nonprofit marketing and communications. And I'm emphasizing storytelling as one of the essentials of marketing and communications. Why? Well, because storytelling is a means of improving how the public, again, whether that be funders, whether that be volunteers, customers, clients, the community, um, maybe even the local government, how they perceive your organization. Storytelling is a great way to do that. This is important if, you, if, if, if it's important to you and to your nonprofit to be recognized for your work, for its value, and for the overall impact it is making. So before we delve further, um, I'm curious to just to know uh, how you're engaging with your website, your social media, and your blogging today to determine how we might integrate storytelling and also to give you some thoughts about it as we go through the presentation. So I have a poll I'd like to ask you to complete. And your feedback will be, will be helpful to help us determine how to integrate storytelling within your nonprofit's online environment that you're using today. The poll will appear on your screen momentarily. Please just complete it. It only takes about a minute and then submit your answers when you finish, please. It 
Let's see here. We've got no, just four questions. Ah, okay. Let's see. So we've got, uh, okay. We'll give you, okay, yeah, we'll just give it a few more minutes to complete. Let's see. Yeah, for those of you that haven't um, completed it, just go ahead and fill it out. This, is, this gives us a really good indicator for some areas that we could work on. About 75% have participated. We're almost there. Shy, there's just a few more people I see that still need to complete it. So maybe just one more minute. Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Also, it might be helpful for people that have a hard time multitasking if you read through them and then as you go, people can answer them too. Oh, okay. Thanks for the tip. Um, so the first, so there's four questions here, guys, um, everybody out there. So the first one is, does your nonprofit have a website? And either yes or no, or not sure. The second question is, which of these marketing communication tools does your nonprofit use regularly? Check all that apply. The choices are blog, newsletter, social media post, podcast, or podcast. A third question is, is your nonprofit using any of these social media platforms regularly? Uh, check all that apply. Choices are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And the fourth question is, which of the following goals is most important for you to achieve at your nonprofit this year in 2023? Um, the choices are finding ways to help my nonprofit receive more funding. That's one choice. Another choice is using social media to help me promote my nonprofit more effectively. Second choice. And then the third is attracting attention from donors, the media and others that could help our nonprofit in a variety of ways. Okay, I think we're, we've got everyone that's going to answer. Thank you, everybody that participated. And for those that um, need to uh, want to maybe participate later, maybe find a way for you to do that. Um, thank you very much. So, can I stop sharing this or should you stop sharing this, Shai? Um, I can stop sharing it. Okay. So I'm gonna um I'm going to select share results. Is that okay? Yeah. And oh I see. I see. So um Thanks again for your um, participation in the poll. Um, so 100% of you guys have a nonprofit, a, a website. No surprise there. That's great. That's, a good, that's of course, a good start. <laughs> um, the second, uh, in this other about the marketing communication tools that your nonprofit is using regularly, it looks as though you've got newsletters you're using a lot and you're doing some sort of social media posting. It's a pretty large number, 80%. So a lot of you are doing that. 
um, is a, a, a smaller portion of you that are using a blog which is good because we're gonna talk about blogs. We're not gonna talk much about newsletters today, but I also see that very few of you are using podcasts. These are all excellent tools to use. Um, we're not talking about that much about podcasts today or newsletters, but um, those are great things to use and to expand upon all of them. And then it looks as though in terms of your social media platforms you're using regularly, Facebook is the top one, Instagram comes in second, LinkedIn uh, is there as well. And then Twitter to a slightly less degree. No one's using TikTok. And quite frankly, it probably, you know, not every uh, social media platform is appropriate anyway. So that, that, that doesn't surprise me. Um, so thank you very much for participating in that. Um, Sarah Ratliff, who is the owner of Mobeta Digital and is a wonderful collaborator and friend, is going to talk about social media later on in the presentation. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing that and put this away. Put that over. Okay. So um, let me uh, get in back into it. So we're going to delve into the pre. Thank you for, for participating in the poll. We're going to delve into the presentation. And first, as a reminder, nonprofit um, marketing communications uses marketing strategies and tactics to raise awareness, solicit funds, and encourage support. And then I now, and, and so one of, and again, I wanna emphasize that this presentation is a lot about using storytelling to do that. Also how you can access your website in a way that will um, translate that your, um, translate the kind of message that you wanna to, to communicate to your, uh, to your audience. And then of course, blogging, which we're gonna talk about as a great way to, to help you do all of that. But what is storytelling? I mean, what exactly is it? I mean, storytelling is the key to nonprofit marketing. It helps you maintain and gain more supporters, volunteers, more grants, because you're connecting with the, with the grant uh, makers and individuals that um, can help fund. Uh, you can better uh, connect with uh, getting uh, more donations and media attention by helping you share relatable stories about real people that can truly touch people's hearts and strengthen your organization's mission. There are a variety of ways to highlight storytelling, whether through video, text, images, or even audibly uh, through the use of voice. Regardless of how you highlight storytelling, be it through your nonprofit's website, your social media channels, or through text in the form of blog copy, you can make a big impression. And the reasons why websites, social media, and blogs are places where you can make the biggest impressions is that these are, these are all resources and tools that the public look to and they refer to to find information. Much in the same way that when you Google to look for something that you're trying to, to, to find. It is also where they look to to find you know, what they need. Uh, for example, a nonprofit that is in need of donor support will more easily be discovered if the nonprofit is engaging on social media, or if there's a blog uh, copy that's been published or a blog series, and when the nonprofit's website is regularly updated and fresh with new information. Uh, there are other excellent tools that we that will help in storytelling, which I mentioned before, include for nonprofits, which of course things like newsletters and nonprofit podcasts which we're not gonna really cover today, but for this morning, we'll just focus on website, social media, and blogging. And to provide you with several video examples of storytelling, I have a couple of things I wanted to, to share with you. Ever since we were little girls, you've compared us to each other. My game versus her game. My ranking versus her ranking. My titles versus her titles. My grand slams. 
versus her grand slams. It's funny. You saw two tennis players trying to win a game. We saw two sisters changing it. I'd like to share that with you. I'm going to show you this one, which is a little bit different. My whole life changed the day I walked in this door. People that I was surrounded by, I could just tell. They were ready to help me before I was ready to help myself. And they didn't even know. When I came to City Team, my life was completely ruled by my drug addiction. My addiction to, to meth and alcohol. I was blessed with, with my son, who, who I believed would change my life overnight. Unfortunately, it didn't work the way that I had hoped. The devil weighed heavily on my shoulders, and I remember I was sitting on a bus bench. I'm sorry. Ever since we were little girls. My whole life changed the day I walked in this door. People that I was surrounded by, I could just tell. They were ready to help me before I was ready to help myself, and they didn't even know me. When I came to City Team, my life was completely ruled by my drug addiction, my addiction to, to meth and alcohol. I was blessed with, with my son, who, who I believed would change my life overnight. Unfortunately, it didn't work the way that I had hoped. The devil weighed heavily on my shoulders, and I remember I was sitting on a bus bench, and I was ready to commit suicide. As I sat there and I thought, I'm like, you know, there's a very simple answer to this. I need to ask for help. I need to do, I need to find help because by myself, I had already figured out that I couldn't do it. Turned myself in to do a, a four year prison term, was blessed with the option to go to a rehab. And after two months, I, I relapsed. And I, I called a friend and I told him, I was like, you know, I left my program and, and all this. And he said, well, I'm at City Team. This will be the best decision you've ever made in your life. Right now, I'm working as a banquet chef. I do love to cook. I still cook for the community, even though I'm at the work phase of my program now that I, I really don't have to. While I was in the Learning Center, I was able to get a hold of a trucking academy. I was able to not only brush up on some things to get my GED, I was able to get as much information as I could on the career that I'm that I'm actually moving forward to now. If it wasn't for my son, I would have lost everything. Me and my fiance, honestly, Charles saved both of our lives. He was my first stepping stone to actually finding the Lord again. I'm super excited to share the message of Christ with him. I can't wait until he's old enough to understand how he brought me to the Lord and how the Lord saved me. Not only do I want to be, but I have to be there for him. He's my baby boy. <laughs> he's, he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. So. So, you know, when you think about storytelling and you think about things that make an impact, I don't think there's any better way to do that than having an individual, a person repre who represents their own experience tell their own story. And I, as we saw in the first video, we experienced storytelling from the perspective of two sisters, but not just any two sisters, two who made history in the professional tennis environment space. We understand who they are and the rigors of practice they invested. Um, the impact of their historic wins are so profound that most of us know who Serena and Venus Williams are, even if we never played tennis. Also, for many of us, we can relate to these women because of the challenges they face throughout their careers. I think most of us are, are aware of some of those challenges. Many of us have also faced similar challenges, There's and, there, and maybe not so much on the tennis court, but we, have, we, we can relate to some of the things of, of maybe of racism, of, of exclusion, and some of the other things we can relate to that. 
So their story is relatable. And although the video was created to promote the multi-million dollar Nike brand, it shows to do it in a way that is more relatable as many of us have also faced challenges in work, school, and our communities. And so Nike's use of the Williams sisters brings this point across much easier while interspersing images of shoes, because trust me, they're selling products too, but um, they're telling a story at the same time that they're selling shoes, clothing, and lifestyle. Now in the second video of storytelling, we meet Curtis and we can glean from his story, from his voice, um, what this man has, has, has dealt with. Um, he's had life altering struggles with substance abuse and through Oakland based city teen ministry made it possible for him to overcome his addiction in a variety of ways that he shares. But also he's telling a story about his his faith. He's telling a story about his, his son, his child, and his wife, and the impact of, the, of, of, of them in his life, but also the organization that made it possible for him in many ways to get to the, the place where he is today. So the impact of the organization on his life and in the lives of many others gives anyone watching these videos a deep understanding about the organization. All right here, we talk about the power of our storytelling, deep understanding, awareness of impact, and relatable. I think these are two entirely different videos do the same thing. Um, more importantly, it is presented in a way that potential funders, volunteers, and donors immediately can grasp the importance of the organization and its programs because it's whoever represents, you know, making decisions about who they're going to fund, you know, in the, in the upcoming year, or, or a volunteer might want to donate his or her time to a, um, an organization, or somebody might just want to donate. Well, they have a very clear idea about that, not just through words, not just through something that's on a website, um, but through really vivid, vivid storytelling. So it would be much harder, it would be much harder to convey your story without providing some level of understanding about an organization's value, without demonstrating its impact, and without making it relatable. Because just as in the Nike example, example, many of us have experienced difficulties. And just as in the case of uh, I believe his name is Curtis. Yes, Curtis, many of us have also have not personally experienced those kinds of difficulties, maybe we've known someone, someone we care about, someone we love, um, have, may have had those kinds of experiences. Now, every uh, nonprofit is not going to be focused on, you know, the issues that city team deals with. It's not going to be obviously uh, in, you know, um, concentrated on the things that Nike's talking about. But when you think about what your particular organization specializes in, you might begin to think about, huh, I could think of an individual, or I could think about a community, or I can think about a program that became um, that became more impactful as a result of the programs that your nonprofit provides. So that's the power of storytelling. And that's just a video example. Um, everything's not going to be in video, and nor should it be, but I just wanted to share that with you. I want to take a break now for questions because, um, you know, I want to kind of get a sense for with the uh, feedback that you provided and the things that you're using, the tools that you're using, do, do you have some ideas about how you could incorporate more storytelling? Do you have any, are you having any challenges that you're facing, feel free to um, ask any questions and let's just maybe spend about 10 minutes um, addressing the storytelling just based upon what, what we've seen and what we've learned and how that um, relates to your organization, your nonprofit. Questions? And by the way, you can send those questions in through a chat or you can, you can, we can make sure that you get unmuted and you can actually ask them through your microphone. No questions? I have one for you, Lori. Okay. Would you, where would you recommend people 
apart from social media, which of course I'll talk about, but where would you recommend that people put um, videos of, you know, if they have impactful videos like the one about Curtis or the Williams sisters, where would you recommend on their website or would you recommend that these be, I guess I'm wondering broader, more broadly than a, than a website. Are there, are there um, places for nonprofits to publish videos like this for impact? You know, there are newsletters, there are websites out there that address nonprofit, uh, the nonprofits in particular, there may be some places for that. There are blogs that are available. I'm going to show and share a couple of, of them in, in the uh, in the slides ahead. Um, but yeah, there are definitely places you can do that. There, you know, um, some some nonprofits like to create a YouTube channel and highlight some of the wonderful stories. City Teams actually um, is a good example. They have a place on their website, and I have it in this slide. You'll see. Uh, an example of that, where they actually place all of these wonderful stories, and they have just a, an array of amazing stories, and they share those stories on a regular basis, and, and they keep their, their, um, their video feed fresh, just as they keep maybe their blog feed fresh with stories and information that is um, the highlights, the great work that they're doing. Does that answer your question? It really does. Thank you. It also looks like we have a question from the chat. Oh, good. Um, Sabrina Saunders um, said, good morning, everyone. I have a question. If you have a lot of stuff, but it is not together, where do you start? <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that. Um, if you have a lot of stuff and you, I think what you want to do, and I think a really great way to start, so, you know, the name of Sabrina? Mm -hmm. Sabrina, I think the way the way you want to start is, let, why don't you, why don't you, and we, there's an area, by the way, towards the end of the um, presentation that talks about how to start, but I would categorize it. I would correct, categorize things like, let's say, blogs, video. I mean, first of all, figure out what makes sense for your organization. Does it make sense for you guys? Do you have the, the, the woman power, the man power to, to, to make it all happen. And then, and you probably do, I'm going to show you something that will actually really help you a lot, but um, I would, I would categorize it. And I would say, you know what, for the, for maybe for the next week or two, I'm going to focus on only on blogs and, and the kinds of things that I can use in a blog format. I'm going to talk about blogs in a second. If there's something that you know that you can use, if you already have some video feed, you can pull that into a, a format that, that's shareable. Um, it might need a little bit of help with someone who's a little bit more savvy if you're not uh, with video, but you'd be surprised at how easy that is and easier that's become just in the past couple of years. Um, when it comes to social media, uh, that in and of itself is a um, platform where you can kind of pick and choose little snippets of information that you want to share uh, on a regular basis. I think scheduling is really, really important. I like scheduling. So if you, for example, Sabrina, wanted to have a schedule, let's say between now and the end of the year, oh my gosh, it's going to be May <laughs> next week. So we don't, you know, we're, we're almost halfway through the year. But if you had a schedule, that would plot out, okay, here are the things I know I wanna do around storytelling. I know I wanna put, I wanna write and, and publish six blogs. I want to um, create some video feed from the videos that I've collected over time. And I wanna, I wanna get those um, submitted and get those published and, and out there um, over the course of the next you know, six or seven months. Um, I think I would, I think that's a great place to start um, because it, 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 make, it makes the process of trying to take so much information um, and so much content, it, it makes it easier to manage when you kind of atta uh, attach it or attack it in little bite-sized pieces, if that makes sense. So um, that's my answer. I would tackle it from that perspective. Is that, Sabrina, does Thank that answer your question? That does answer the question um, because for me, I have two different kind of subject matter. The work that I do here with 
the faith community in Contra Costa County, but I also do work. I manage three schools in an orphanage in Haiti. So I'm oh. trying to start um, oh. putting more emphasis on fundraising and information sharing for that work. I mean, yes. it's like I'll send out pictures to people that give and write, I write a newsletter. But I yes. mean, I want to really have some like dedicated storytelling yes. about that work. Um, so people can understand it a little better. I think that's, uh, first of all, what, what you're involved in is extraordinarily important. And I think if you can, and I know you will, you know, take that information. Don't, I know you, it sounds like you might feel a little overwhelmed, but just tackle small pieces of it. If you have a picture or if you have a, a little piece of video, Incorporate that into maybe a blog or a blog series. Give it a title, and almost in the same way that a, you know a traditional newspaper would have like a series on you know, I don't know, greenhouse or whatever. And you can come up with your series and then start sending it out on a regular basis. Keep in mind too, if you have a um, an email list, people that regularly receive your information, that regularly receive your newsletter make sure that they're receiving that as well. Okay. And a lot of the, all these tools that we're using today, I have a resource sheet that's at the very end. So it's gonna list a couple of things that I think might be helpful to you, but you'd be surprised. A lot of things you can schedule well in advance. You don't have to just do everything at the same time. Um, sometimes you could just, many times you can set up your schedule, maybe spend a couple of hours getting everything set up, identifying when you want to go out, and then you can go back to doing these other things and know that all of this, in the case of social media, that that's going out. It's that it will be actually scheduled to go out and you won't have to sit there and you know push buttons. So I hope that that kind of helps you a little bit to kind of definitely. think about it. Okay. Definitely, definitely, because I, like you said, overwhelmed. Yes. So don't even know how to think about it. I know, I know, and I've been there, but it's, Trust me, when you just take little small pieces and tackle it from that standpoint and then go to the next one, you'd be surprised at how much you can um, accomplish. You know, it's very, it's very doable. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. We have a couple more questions from the chat. Okay. Um, so the first one is from Elizabeth Watt from New College Berkeley. Um, and they said, I, I believe they meant if using written storytelling, websites, letters, et cetera, how long is it good to aim for accounting for reading attention? Also, oh. how important how important is it to use a name versus anonymous? Oh, um, I think you definitely want to use a name because people can relate to you, who is this person, you know, and they may want to Google and figure out what your connection is. Uh, secondly, 500 words, no more. I don't know, Sarah, you have a thought about this. Who's a writer? I, I say 500 words tops. Um, I think it actually depends on the publication. Um, I think if you, so for example, I think if you're pitching a story about, uh, about a client of yours, I think 500 to 600 is, is great. But for content writing, um, Google likes a thousand words or more. So it all depends on what your what your what your goal is. If your goal is to rank in Google, then then right now the best practice is say a thousand words or more, and long form is twenty five hundred words if you can believe it or more. Yeah, for the, blogging. Blogging. yeah, the yeah okay. for blogging the the yeah the Google Google likes to change things up a little bit. So yeah. um. So right now they're saying a thousand for short form and twenty five hundred for long form. Um, in website on, on your website though, uh, it depends on which page on the website. And and you know I I don't want to take up too much of Lori's time, but um, I'll say that that some pages really you want to keep it very succinct, very short, like on the home page. But then you're about and and subsequent clicks in, you can go a little bit longer. Um, but blogs definitely, I would say closer to a thousand or, or more based on, and these are, you know, Google could change tomorrow and tell us, you know, we want to go back to 500 word blogs, but for the moment, 
this is what they're saying. Um, and even for reading, I, I understand what your what your concern is, Elizabeth, about uh, people's uh, attention span. And it is uh, unfortunately fairly low, um, which is unfortunate because that does tend to conflict with what Google wants. So go figure. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. There's is one it, more question. Okay, sure. I'll be a pretty short one. Um, it's from Stephen from NLPOA. Um, and their question is, how, how do I find videographers who will create videos pro bono? Oh, thanks for the question, Steve. That's a great question. You know what? I'm a big, big fan. <laughs> I always tell people this. I'm a big fan of uh, students. I'm a big fan of tapping into uh, students that are, and, you know, we're, we're, you know, surrounded by colleges, um, offering maybe a stipend and seeing if there's, if there's a way that a student that is studying uh, videography or probably pretty knowledgeable about it would be willing to work on a project for you. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, another recommendation is, and I swear by this, <laughs> anybody under the age of 25, You'd be surprised how much they know. I mean, seriously, there there are people that actually know how to do uh, things that can that will produce really good professional results for you. Um, I would check around and see who's in the family that's really young that probably already knows how to do this. But if you want to get a slam dunk professional videographer that will work for you pro bono, I would say check with the colleges, the, the local colleges. You got you know. Um, so many of them, you know, UC Berkeley, we've got Mills, we've got um, the, um, Hayward State, I don't call it Hayward State anymore, but whatever it's called now, um, and the other schools. And then also, I would ask a professional videographer, hey, I'm with this organization, I'm trying to achieve this, I'm wondering if we could maybe do some little barter, or do you have any kind of pro bono work that you offer? Um, to, I, as a publicist that's, that works for myself and working for myself for a long time, I always do, um, I usually allow at least one or two pro bono clients to work with per year. I don't really advertise it, but sometimes people just come to me. And um, if I have the time and, and what have you, and it's a project I'm interested in working on, I will do it because it's important to help people and it's important to help um uh, endeavors that um, are in, you know, that match the kinds of things I care about. So you'd be surprised. I would ask a, a professional person just straight out, Steve, I think that would work too. Any other questions? Those are all the questions that I see. Okay, we're going to have another session, uh, another area for questions. So let me just move forward here. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So now we, we talked a little bit about the um, you know, videos and how we can tell stories there. Um, so, you know, as we said before, when it comes to storytelling, there's various ways to accomplish this. I, you know, showed you those examples. Now let's look at nonprofit story storytelling through your website. And let me be clear that when we talk about storytelling through your website, I'm referring to using your website as the host or as the place where images and text and videos and other uh, communication vehicles like newsletters and podcasts can be located to help demonstrate the work your nonprofit has accomplished and is currently accomplishing. So these next few slides uh, address how to accomplish this using information like pictures and, and blog copy and that sort of thing on your existing website. Um, before I show you a few that work extremely well, it's important to remember what doesn't work well. It's happened to all of us. You're searching for something. You're desperate to find just the right pizza place or just the right, whatever it is that you're looking for. And then you get to this place where, oh my gosh, the website isn't there. And that says a lot about the business. So it probably says maybe they're not in business anymore. So you want to make sure that your website never has broken links, is not using a lot of old tech tools, and your web person would know what, what 
we'll, we'll keep you abreast on what's new and fresh and new. Um, that is never just a website with tons and tons and tons of text um, and very few images. But here's some shining examples. Um, I love these websites and I chose these because several of them are occur collaborators have been working with occur and I was very lucky to get an opportunity to work with them. Um, for example, OWH studios, these are all very different websites um, and they all present very differently, but I'm really impressed. I'll now, OWH is based in Oakland. It's a studio. They've got lots of stuff going on there. They've got classes. They've got studio rentals. Um, they're located in the Liberty Hall Studios. They've got, but they've got a, a great way of, of telling their story just through information that's on the website. Just going to go through a few of their pages. They've got a photo archive. They have a video archive. Video is what they do, but they've, they've got people that, that are part of the staff that are talking about various topics. Um, there's a veterans community media network that's connected to this. Very, very valuable, very important. Um, they, they talk about their studio rental. Most people don't even know that this exists in Oakland. Uh, they have a, so anyway, I'm gonna keep singing their praises, but they deserve it because I, I'm really impressed with the work they do there. So that's one example. Um, healthy Black Families, they're in Berkeley. They also do a, a wonderful job of talking about social equity and justice, social justice, um, specifically on Black families. And they do a lot of work around uh, repairing uh, issues uh, around uh, racism in Berkeley. Um, they've got a, a capital building fund uh, that, and they, you can do, which you can do, donate to. They talk about their impact. I mean, you can see all of this, you can see their mission, you see people represented. They've got this um, stories here um, where you can learn more about the various programs within their organization and how to get involved as a donator, as a volunteer, as a participant. I think they do a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. Just, this is just a good, this is just an example. Um, hang on, let me just move it that way. Okay, that's that one. Um, City teams, you saw that earlier. I'm gonna click on the website though. So you can see a little bit more about city teams um, based in Oakland. Again, very different website from the others, but they do a great job. They've got, uh, here, the, here are their stories that they have a whole page. We talked about Curtis earlier and, oh, I don't know why that's doing that. Um, Anyway, um, here we go. Various stories about various people who have been impacted by the programs available through city teams, Oakland. And we saw his story earlier. Um, they talk about the programs that they offer. They, they make it very easy for you to find how to donate, how to donate monthly, how to start a fundraiser. Um, how to leave a legacy. There are people that are maybe have passing away or, or planning for their, you know, um, when their life ends and what they want to do with, with their gifts, with their financial gifts. Great website, I think. Excellent website. And talk about, and, and all of these websites really um, provide you with information about who's leading, you know, who's, who's at the head of these organizations and who are these people. You know, what do they do? How did they, you know, get, learn more about them? Destiny. I love this Destiny Arts. I don't know if anyone's ever gone to Destiny Arts. Well, you already know what this is about because you see the kids and it's about, you know, dance and all the things that they're doing. They're trying to ignite social change through the arts. And they've been around for 35 years. Amazing organization. 
They've got, they talk about all the pro, they've got an elders program, they've got a teen program, they've got all these things, how to get involved. They're telling stories. These are all story forms of storytelling represented here. Uh, and then this is, I was, I, one of my favorite, um, organ, well, yeah, one of my favorite organizations I had very, very lucky to work with when I was working with uh, some of the work I was doing with Occur several years ago is the Multicultural Institute. They're based in Berkeley. Awesome organization. Absolutely amazing organization. Uh, it's really focused on helping communities when they come to this country, enabling them to be, to be paid fairly, to be recognized, their skill development, all kinds of things. We actually have someone from the Multicultural Institute in here today. Really? Oh, really? Yay! I'm a big fan, big fan. Um, they do a great job, just a great job. It's, but anyway, and, and you see you see the stories here. I mean, you can see them. They've got an anniversary dinner coming up next month. They've got the programs. They've got all of this stuff. And um, very impressive, very impressive website. So, um, so these are shining examples. And since your website is where all of the details about your organization resides, it makes sense that your website reflect everything you want your visitors to the site to know. So why not highlight aspects about the impact your organization is making through your website? Um, as we saw earlier through, with, through the video examples, um, those videos, you know, help elevate the impact of the people supported and, and, and help like in the city teams video as well. And the elevation of the brand told by the legacy of the Williams sisters with Nike. These are, these are examples. And then these websites, these are all examples used to highlight stories by placing videos or by placing images or by placing a, enough information there um, so that anybody that visits everything that they need to know about that organization is reflected there. So effective web presence is really about, um, as we see in the four examples that I just shared, our websites that integrate a strong online presence that establish credibility because they illustrate on their web pages what they do and who or what they support. And they demonstrate the impact of the services they provide. All of these are elements of an effective web presence and viable methods for storytelling through pictures, information, and video. Not every web page or website needs all of these elements. Sometimes a website with no video, but an array of vibrant pictures is sufficient or a website with, with video and minimal images and text is effective or a website with all of them can work. The main thing to remember is to provide visitors, your visitors, um, uh, your website with enough information to tell a sufficient enough story about your organization so that it draws attention and makes a memorable impact. Let's now talk about blogging. And this is going to be one you guys really want to pay attention to because I know you're paying attention to all of it, but you want to, this might really resonate because blogging is one of the areas that you're not as focused on. Um, well, I shouldn't say that you're not as focused on. It's just an area that it seems as though you're not doing as much as you're doing some of the other things. So blogs began, just, just a little history. Blogs began as a way for people to write about their passion day-to-day -day life, things they find interesting, like cooking or baking or, um, you know, being a mother or being a father or being a parent or being a parent of little kids. Um, it kind of started that way. They were like online journals or diaries, but blogs are a type, and blogs are a type of a website. I like to think of blogs as editorial, like an editorial, like in a newspaper, the Oakland Post or the, uh, San Francisco Chronicle, there's always um, an editorial section. In many ways, in my mind, blogs are kind of like that. It's something that you feel passionate about that you write about all the time. Uh, or that you write about in a way that you have a series uh, in various aspects of, of blogs. So it, it can be used, to just, just to stay with me on the blog thing here for a minute. So a blog can be used by 
uh, you know, individual or businesses or nonprofit to promote an idea or brand or story or product or more. So in the nonprofit space, it offers a perfect vehicle to share stories of impact, to highlight key individuals in the community and the ways in which your nonprofit is making a positive difference or an impact. A blog is usually located on an existing website, but a blog can also be a standalone website. And I'll show you some examples of both of these in a minute. But in the instance of a blog located on an existing website, like a nonprofit website, it can be quite helpful in generating more traffic onto your site through technology or an algorithm, which is called search engine optimization. I'm not going to get into a whole lot, but I will just say this about that without loading you too with too much tech jargon. Just know that when you have a blog and it is set up in a way that integrates keywords, the same keywords someone would use to Google something about your organization, that is what SEO means. If you've, for example, if you've ever sought to locate a dentist, for example, online via Google, and let's say you want to find a dentist who specializes in oral surgery, whose practice to say is near where you live. Let's say you live in Oakland. You're looking for a dentist who knows a lot about oral surgery, who lives in Oakland. So the chances are you're going to type in keywords like dentist in Oakland, oral surgery, or some other arrangement of keywords. Well, SEO or the technology will match what you've typed with millions of data online and then within seconds reveal a short or long list of dentists that fit that description. Well, this is the same way I want you to think about um, your using a blog for your nonprofit. Um, so let's say for example, if a funder is searching for an interesting nonprofits that are making an impact, let's say in early childhood education or in homelessness or whatever the nonprofit specializes, when you have a blog which uses keywords in the right way within the text, the chances of being located and found is much easier. Moreover, is that by writing a blog and publishing it regularly, you stand a good chance for increasing visits to your website and a better chance of visitors understanding more about your organization. So I'm going to show you, that's just kind of like a little quick thing about blogs. I'm going to show you some outstanding, outstanding blog examples. Um, here's one that relates to nonprofits. This one is called Cause Vox, and maybe many of you are familiar with it. But it's a, it's a, it's a blog that focuses on fundraising and and tips and education for the nonprofit community. So this is a blog. It's a standalone blog. It is, um, and, and it has all kinds of articles here within this larger blog, all kinds of things. And you might want to make note of it because. It has um, a lot of information I think that would be relevant for you. That's one example. Visit Oakland is another example of a blog that is a standalone blog. This is all about things to do in Oakland. It's a blog though, but it has to do things to do, nightlife, have a hella Oakland day, great places to go outdoors, trails, farmer, the best farmer's markets, the best, you know, all that kind of stuff, everything about Oakland. But I think the one, and I, and I like this blog, I like all, all these blogs, but this one, and this one, I really like this one, the Ecology Center, um, because this is a good example of a blog that is associated with a nonprofit's web, website. So it's produced by the Ecology Center. Somebody at the Ecology Center writes the blog, their blog is 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 part of the website, and it's 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 um, integrated within the website. I like this, and I think this is really um, just knowing what I know about nonprofits. I think this is the type of blog. If you don't have one today, um, I would consider adding one. And then when you go to the blog page, you'll see here the different different stories. And, and uh, you'll notice the dates. So these are relatively recent. Explore the Ecology Center's Disposable Foodware Policy Toolkit. That was just published in February. 
um, help desk top five most interesting questions of 2022. That was in January. So they're, they're probably doing one per month. They're probably a little bit behind, but this is a perfect, perfect example of how you could arrange yours. So outstanding examples of blocks. And what else I have to say about that? Um, oh, oh, yeah, I want to say this to you. So, so creating a blog on your existing website can be as simple as adding a new web page to your existing site. So if you're using, I don't know how many of you guys are using Wix or Squarespace or any of the other web template formats, it's really easy. I mean, it will take you about five minutes, if even probably less than that, just to create one. Um, but it's important to plan ahead for what you'd want to write and then create a schedule of block topics so that you always have something fresh and new on your in your blog feed, if that makes sense. So I'm going to stop here and check in and see if there's any questions about blogs, check uh, about creating an effective web presence or storytelling story through websites. Lori, if no one else has a question, I, um, I just want to take this opportunity to ask a question about blogs. Okay. Um, so Lori will probably tell you I am her worst student ever. I'm going to try to get you to do a blog for some fun, <laughs> girl. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, so here's my question. Does the blog have to be written as an article, or can you have a blog that, say, a recorded um, interview with someone? And I'll, I'll just um, close off my, I'll mute my. A, a recorded interview with someone. Um, you can share that. I think the thing about blogs and every, you know, you talk to somebody else, they may have a different opinion. I think that when you have a blog, it feels like it's coming from someone, it's coming from either an individual or an individual that is deeply connected to an organization or a business or something. I think it feels more personalized. So I, yes, so the answer is yes. I think what I would do in an instance like that or in a situation like that, I think I would make sure it's clear who the blogger is and that you're sharing this recorded interview. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think personalization- yes, yes, it does. Is really important. I think personalization is really important. Thank you. And we have another question in the chat from Michelle Edmond from Jameco. Um, she said, what is a good frequency for posting blogs weekly or monthly or how often? Ah, Michelle, that's a good question. I like, at the very least, uh, I like to see one, a fresh one every month, at the very least. Um, if you can do more, that's fine. You know, you want them to be read too, you know, so you don't want to put too much stuff out there because you want it to be read. Um, but I would say you, I once a month, excuse me, once a month at the very least. But if you wanted to do it more frequently, maybe twice a month, maybe three times a month. Hope that helps. Are there any, I'm just checking my time. How am I doing for time? Oh, doing great. Okay. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, we are going to move to our favorite topic, social media. And I want to introduce Sarah Ratliff, who's the owner of Mobeta Digital. She's based in Puerto Rico. She's an eco organic farmer, uh, former uh, corporate head <laughs> who decided to uh, go out and uh, live uh, out in beautiful part of the, of the, of the country. And um, that's where she runs her business. And we do a lot of collaboration together. She's a writer. She's written a couple of books. And I think she's probably working on one right now. Um, but she's also an expert on social media. And so I am going to turn it over to Sarah Ratliff, who's going to talk about social media storytelling. 
Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, before I begin, I just noticed that Peer Richards um, posted a question for you, Lori. Oh. Is using the same writing voice that important since some organizations might have different contributors? You know, I think I've seen blogs done really well that have different con contributors. And I think that you can, that that's perfectly okay. It doesn't have to just be one person. It can be a variety of people that especially, in fact, you know, it's really, when you think about it, I think that that's probably a very smart way to go about it because you get a, a more diverse feeling about the voice and about opinions and about, you know, activities going on at that organization when you have more than one person contributing. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that um, having having multiple voices is a good thing. Um, it allows people to hear multiple voices, but also people get attached to certain writing styles. And also some person might be interested in writing about X while some person else is, is interested about writing about Y. And so you sort of get your, your, um, your, your 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 favorite okay i'm trying to i thought i had uh everything lined up give me a second i apologize um okay so i am sharing oh that's why because i didn't open up canva that's why okay give me a second i'm so sorry oh my goodness Okay, social media, here we go. Okay, as Lori says, we've collaborated a lot over the years. I'm thankful to say she, Lori is an amazing client and, and good friend. And I'm really very honored to be here. Um, I've heard about Occur and um, Carmen for a long time, and I'm just really thrilled to be here. So thank you. Um, I very briefly about me, I uh, was in the corporate world for 20 years. I, I've worked in health insurance. I've worked in biotech and big pharma. I've worked in small startups from hardware and software startups to um, larger companies. And um, even uh, I started out actually in journalism. I was um, a journalism major and, and decided I wanted to go into marketing. And now I've kind of come full circle in that I'm now back and I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. I'm doing marketing and uh, writing. So I'm kind of living my best life where I get to take all of the experience I gained in the corporate world and I work for myself. And I, I have a very specific kind of client base that I work with. Um, and I've been honing that client base for a long time and nonprofits fit in very nicely because um, I really like to work with people who are doing good things for the community. And whatever community you're in, um, the, these things are extremely important to me as we get more global and more, um, more multinational, you know, just, just larger companies that um, uh, appear not to have a heart. And so I really like to work with people who are doing good things for the community. So it's really one of those think local or think global, act local kind of thing. So I'm really... Um, and I'm going to switch headphones. I didn't realize my husband was going to turn on the car. So I apologize. Let me switch headphones so you all can't hear that. And <clears throat> so today I'm going to. I'm going to talk about the importance of social media for your nonprofit. And sorry, sorry to oh. it looks like part of your screen is being um, covered. Maybe your oh. webcam is. Oh no, is no, that no, a little no. bit better? Yeah, you. we could still see you before. It was just like a little bit. Okay, okay. I think I, I the privacy screen, I hadn't moved it all the way across. Thanks, Shai. Yeah, okay. um, so this is really, it's gonna be a fairly short presentation and it's really the importance of social media marketing for nonprofits. And I'm actually gonna quote somebody who is not a very popular person in this particular realm. Um, I'm assuming not a very popular person, but prior to running for president, um, and I'm not a fan of his, I just remember something he said in, in um, 2012 uh, or earlier that was, uh, um, 
four letter word Donald Trump. He um, said that if he had had it to do all over again, he would have done all of his marketing through social media. And we did see that, of course, when he was in the White House, he just kind of blew up Twitter and it, he became a real pain in the butt. But um, he had a point and his point really was that people have turned a lot of their attention to social media. And um, I think it's especially important for nonprofits. I think it's important for profit for 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 profit companies, but I think it's particularly important for nonprofits because um, because this is an opportunity for you to get your message out there and your message is not just buy my widgets your message is ultimately help it is look and see these are the human focus stories that we're we're we're, we're sharing with you i loved Lori's example about curtis um because and of course the williams sisters everybody knows the williams sisters i'm not into tennis so much but um I cry every time I see uh, the two of them on screen because uh, we've all watched their story unfold since they were teenagers working with their extraordinary father. And, um, and then we saw the story of Curtis where he tells all he has to do is share something that's so relatable to the rest of us. We all have been touched by drugs and addiction, all of us. I don't care who you are, whether you're rich, poor, black, white, Asian, gay, straight, trans, I don't care who you are very likely you have been touched by addiction. So those stories do tend to pull at our heartstrings. And so nonprofits, that's a great way for a nonprofit. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that this is why they do it because um, yes, we want to get people interested in what we believe. So um, social media, this is why social media is so important. So let me, I'm actually working on two screens at once because I am, Oops, why is this not moving? Oh no, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no, I ran this before we started and everything was doing fine. Oh shoot, oh my goodness. Um, okay, give me a second, I'm having a little technical difficulty. I can't even find my mouse. Oh my goodness. Sarah? Is, yes. No, don't panic. Don't panic. Okay. If you want to work that out, I could do something that I think the group might find kind of fun with regard to AI. Sure. Yeah, please. That would be great. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get back to the social media thing in, in just a minute, everybody. But everybody, I got to, I have to uh, think well, everybody, most people <laughs> are being inundated with all of this AI stuff, right? Artificial intelligence, AI. I hate to even say AI stuff because it's real, it's part of our lives, it's how we live. Um, but I want to spend about five minutes on artificial intelligence because um, it's important. And there's a tool that I that's out there that everyone's using. I kind of, I feel have mixed emotions about it because the tool is called chat GPT. I, it's, it's, it's helpful, but I think that it can be, um, it can be misused and miss a little bit misunderstood, but having said all that, that was my little preliminary thing about chat GPT. I still think it's important to share it with you because I think it will make your life a lot easier. So let me just tell you a little bit. I'm going to show my screen. Um, hang on. I'm going to, sh oops. I'm going to share my screen that has the slide about it. So hang on. Give me a second here. Um, okay. I'm going to, sh and then where's my what my thing here for you. Okay, there's that. Lori, you have a raised hand. Oh, okay. Steven, he says he uses chat uh, GPT and he likes it. Steven, oh. are you are you there, Steven? Can you? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hi. So my, we have to use it, actually uses it. Okay. Yeah, one of my buddies turned me on to it and I've done research with it. It beats Google. As far as speed, yeah. So far, I believe everything that I've researched is accurate. Okay. Also, I did some writing, 
and I would submit it to chat and say ref refine and edit. Wow. And within less than 45 seconds, it comes back with my product, yeah. but only better. So, I, okay, that's good to hear. I'm glad it's working out for you, Stephen. I, I've used it also. Here's where I have, and this is just my own thing. I just feel, you know, I think kids are going to be used, and they're probably already using it, turning in their papers, getting their papers written, and then they don't end up knowing anything. Um, I think there's only so much that you can derive from the from the from the web uh, because uh, what I'm saying is. If you want to have a, a paper or you're, you're trying to create something that is very specific, I don't, chat GPT comes close, but it, it cannot tell something in the authentic way that only you can based upon your unique life experiences, if that makes sense. Jack, uh, chat GBT will definitely create something for you and it will be somewhat accurate. It will be accurate, but it won't be, it won't be personal enough. If that makes sense. At least for the world that in the, in the things that I'm trying to produce in PR, I like to have things be very, very specific to clients or very, very specific to me personally. And chat GPT just can't do that. So, Lori, before you get be into more detail on chat, mm -hmm. uh, GPT, why don't you explain to us exactly what it is? Because I'm listening to the conversation, but I'm not, I hear what it can do, but I don't know what it is. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, it, what are you talking about? I know. <laughs> so, and I, I, I'll do the best to explain it. It is a tool. It is a uh artificial intelligence tools, meaning that it, it just like when you, it, well, it's, it, it can foresee what you want or foresee what you need and then give it to you. So, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of that right now. Oh, good. Um, let me just pull it up so we can stop talking about it. And show I it still don't you. get it. I know. I know. <laughs> What can I say? I'm a boomer. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Well, the thing is, you know, we're here. We got we got to deal with it, you know. Um, let me share my screen. While you're sharing your screen, I'll tell you a really quick AI funny. So I was in Target the other day and I heard a woman who was saying, I just am so upset with this A1. There oh. is A1 everywhere. And I was like, A1. Oh, she's talking. But AI. AI, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yes. Are, are you there? I'm here. Hold okay. on. I just want to share my screen here. If I can just get it up here properly. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go here and I'm going to share and do you see my screen by yes. chance? Okay, let me do this and let me do this. And there we go. So chat GPT, it's really all about, you know, here's some things that I think would be helpful to you for donation cop donation page copies, social media posts, um, some other things, um, writing. Um, it can actually do this stuff for you. And I'm going to demonstrate it here right now. Get this pulled up right now, which is where... Here we go. Okay. Technology. All right. So here's somebody might want to give me an example. Would somebody, do you want to, let's see, let me think of. So let's do this. Let's, I'm going to use the PR world. I'm going to write, we're going to get ChatGPT to write us a press release on something. Anybody can can someone can volunteer. Who wants to volunteer? Carmen, you want to or does someone? Sure, I'll else? volunteer. So okay. let's we're gonna do a write a or we could do a, a blog copy. Do you want to do blog copy or you want to do a press release? Blog copy, because if it's write, good, I'm gonna use it. Write a write blog a blog about Carmen Bogan's. Look, is that okay? That's fine. Rodney. 
Let's see. No. Um, uh, where's Rodney? Where's Rodney? Yes. So this is a tool. Watch this. Oh, what? Something went wrong. This issue persists. Okay, it happened. Um, <laughs> Got to make a point. It's not going. Not going to work. Let me go back. Let me do a new chat. Okay. Write a blog about Carmen. If this is good, I mean, if this works, this is really helpful. Well, it worked. well yeah, I have kind of a love hate with it, or, or maybe not a love hate, a like hate with it. Um, Barnes, where's sometimes it can be really good, huh? Sometimes it can be really Im impressive. Watch this. Oh, oh, all up in my business. All up in your business. <laughs> <laughs> That's all up crazy. In your business. How do they know this? This is creepy. I, because everything's that's already out on the on the internet. That's how it knows it. But it can't know what is not there, right? There's a lot okay. of things. Okay. Right? I do see one thing here. The right. rest of it is good, but it says. What's the message of where's Rodney? Right. It's okay to be different mm -hmm. and it's important to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, it's not foolproof, but it's like totally wrong. But it's, good, okay. but it's okay. It sounds good. It sounds <laughs> good. And and this is, see, the, the thing that, that's interesting about this is that it makes the message more universal mm -hmm. than, and acceptable Mm -hmm. than the message really is because what this what the real message was if you read through this is that there is a little boy of color who does not have access to mm -hmm. parks right. the kind of parks that right. other people have right. access to and right. it puts him at a disadvantage but that's not a popular thing to say so so gp that's what i'm saying that's why yeah. that's why it may be good it's so i wanted to share it with everyone because this would be a great way to kind of get started on writing. right then you take that first if you're busy get this thing done as you see it happens within seconds then you take that copy and then you refine it okay and you you know right um, want to do another example sure Shai, do you have an you have a, an idea, or does someone else in the audience have an idea? I don't, but also um, Sarah's back in business whenever you oh, are. Oh, you back in business, Sarah. All right, Sarah, can you give us one? Can you give us an example? Actually, yes. Um, I actually have two, but I'll, but tell me tell me which one you like better. Um, what about one about the work that Doctors Without Borders does? Oh, good. So this, how about you want to write a blog, or you want a, a report, or you want to, what is, what do you, what, what do we want? Do we how want about a blog? blog? Okay, so write a blog about Doctors Without Borders. Oh, sorry, no, 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 uh, yeah, exactly, no apostrophe, yeah. Just that in general? Just that, yeah. Leave, leave it like that and let's see what, what they come up with. Okay, so you got quite a bit of information here. Well, this is good. Well, yeah. I will say I'm very pleased that um, they at least named West Africa and didn't like lump all of Africa into one country. That that's yeah, pretty, yeah, that, that, that's yeah, pretty smart. Africa country, yeah. Yeah, the big Africa country. Yeah, that country um, is huge, isn't it? <laughs> it? It's really it's really huge. <laughs> you know okay. that would. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, no, 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 no. I was okay. I was going to kind of combine what you're saying with what. Lori's teaching as well, because Lori was teaching about blogs. So from your perspective, forget about the information that they put in. 
is this the tone of a blog? Do they at least, when they look at the the arena of a blog, is this how one would write a blog? So this is just information that could be used yeah. for a blog, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some people say, oh, I don't know where to start. Well, here's a great thing. Again, where, where my fear for this is people will use this in ways where they just take everything that it has and, and, and just assume that it's all accurate. Mm -hmm. and, and I think about kids using this to write their reports in school, you know, which they're doing uh, in college. And so they're trying to figure out a way to, to separate that. But anyway, it's a great tool to use, especially for folks in the nonprofit nonprofit realm. This is just a great tool. So just, so just know that it exists. Steven's already on top of it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> Steven's laughing. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Sorry. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> mute yourself, Steven. <laughs> mute I do Steven. think it's a, it, 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 sorry. I, I'm sorry, Carmen. I do think it's a great tool. But the, what I would be interested to see is if we ran this through Copyscape and whether it would pop as as plagiarized material, because I am curious about where it I mean, I understand that it pulls its information from Google <clears throat> from the from the the chat bots on on Google. But I'd be curious to see how much of it pops on Copyscape, how much of it is actually original content. Um, so. I don't know. Good point. I'm, yeah, and I'm not, I, I, as a writer, I can't, I have to tell you that I, I can't support, I mean, I'm a writer and a social media person. I do a lot of things, but I can't support something that's going to eventually put me out of business. Yeah, I, I yeah, I hear you. I, mean, I agree, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. Totally. So I know we've got about uh, 20 minutes okay. left and we wanna have some time for Q and A. So Sarah, you wanna jump in with your social media? Yes, it looks like I can. Maybe just, uh, maybe just, maybe keep it to about actually 10 minutes. Is that okay? Oh, I probably can keep it to shorter than that. I don't think that's a problem. I just, I, I had it working. Let's just make sure that it's still working. Yes, it is. Okay. So I gave my little preamble and um, all right. So why is social media important? When it comes to nonprofit organizations, social media marketing and fundraising go hand in hand. A strong social media presence can increase awareness of, of your organization and attract more supporters and donors. So this is pretty key because you can use social media in the same way that other that for profit companies use it. But because you ultimately want to tug at people's heartstrings, you can use the storytelling that uh, that Lori was talking about at the top of her presentation. Storytelling is a wonderful tool to use on social media. For example, on Instagram, you can do little short reels that would be like uh, bite-sized chunk stories of um, Curtis, um, you know, or bite-sized chunk stories about uh, Syrian refugees or whatever you can, you can do 30 to 60 minute, uh, 30 to 60 second reels. So these are great ways to pull people in. And this is why social media is one of the most valuable fundraising tools for nonprofit organizations. However, using social media effectively requires a strategic approach. Where to start? First, look at your target audience. Define who your target audience is. I'm sure that as nonprofits already in business, I have to believe that you've probably already identified your target audience. And from that point, once you've you've defined your target audience, whether they're donors, whether they are um, people in the community who are interested because they might avail your services, whoever is whoever is your target audience, and and of course people have multiple target audiences. Once you've defined your target audience and create content, then you create content that resonates with them. So it kind of helps to do a little bit of, uh, if you've already done your marketing plan, your business plan, um, take, your, take the marketing portion of your business plan and really, really hone in on, um, on who your target audience is and how you can create content that would resonate with them. I like to think of social media as um, the same way that I do when I'm writing an article is that I always have a person in mind. I always have a, um, I, have a I have a persona in mind essentially. 
And so this way, when I'm writing or I'm creating a blog post or I'm creating a social media meme, I have some, I have a very specific person in mind. Um, so visual identity, consistent visual identity on all social media channels, including the same logo, colors, and fonts helps establish brand recognition and a cohesive look. That's, that's probably fairly self-explanatory. If your website's colors or if your uh, branding colors, so to speak, are purple and steel gray. Those are my two favorite colors. So I, I'm going to create the logo that 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 fits in with those color schemes. The website's going to be in those color schemes. And the social media memes will also be in those color schemes. So people start to recognize, okay, this is what Occur does. This is this is Occur's uh, uh, color palette. This is this is this is their branding, and so we want to stay consistent. And so people start to recognize uh, you through your social media memes, um, both both because you have the logo on there, but also more importantly is that the, that you've got some some uh, cohesiveness going on with the rest of the marketing you've got going on. Your strategy to develop a clear social media strategy to achieve your nonprofit's goals and ensure that all social media activities are aligned with it. This goes back to your target audience. Once you've figured out who your tar target audience is, it's going to be easier to figure out your visual identity and also your strategy. So if you already know you've got this particular person in mind, then you can create a strategy around uh, around that. And I talk with my hands. If you can still see me, I have it. Uh, I grew up in New York City and I don't know, I think I was Italian in a past life. I talk with my hands. Um, so there you go with social media strategy. And once you've created a strategy, it becomes easier to create posts. All right, I'm back at it. This is great. Oh, that's why. Ah, I just learned something from you, Lori. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that little blue button at the bottom. I wondered why you were, you kept clicking on it, and now I see why. I feel so silly. Um, so content. Creating high-quality content that resonates with your target audience helps your organization stand out from the crowd, differentiate itself from similar nonprofits, and increase the chances of getting noticed by potential donors or volunteers. So somebody uh I, I i think it was michelle i'm sorry if i if i uh got the wrong person but somebody asked lori um uh, how long your content should be and how often you should be posting and i'll tell you this quality is more important than quantity it's better to have one very well researched very well created or very well um organized uh blog posts than to have three or four disorganized ones. And so your your audience will come to expect that every time, even if you only post once a month, that every time you post, it's going to reflect the community. It's going to reflect the work that you do. It's going to create the, uh, uh, reflect the people you serve or the, the, the mission that you serve. And on top of that, it'll tell a story that reflects that, that that also um, reflects who you are um, as well. So these, these are very important components when creating content and whether you're doing that as a blog or social media. In the case of social media, again, quality is more important than quantity. I think a lot of people think with social media, you have to post every day. And I don't actually necessarily agree with that. I do whatever my clients want me to do. If they want me to post daily, that's what I'll do. If they want me to post four times a day, that's what I'll do. My preference is to post quality over quantity. And because when people come to you, they know they're going to expect a really good story. And whether that's done through videos, vibrant images, well-written blogs, newsletters, podcasts, it doesn't matter. It's going to be quality and they're going to come to expect that from you. So it's more important than frequency. There, sorry to cut in for a second. Um, I just wanted to make sure that your slides were working. Are you intended to be on the social media marketing for nonprofits slide? It looks oh. like it froze on the first one. Oh, it did. Uh, oh dear. Oh dear. So I, I've moved, to, I, I was on content. Can you see that now? No, it's, I'll tell you when it moves. It's still on the same one. 
That's okay, Sarah, we're running out of time. So if you could just continue with your presentation because we're, we are getting the information as you speak it. We're just not getting it visually. Goodness, I'm so sorry. Okay, not I'll do a that. Problem. You could just keep moving. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Guidelines to help you create great content. Stay true to your mission. That's probably the most important as a, as a nonprofit is stay true to your mission. And of course, you, you know what your mission is. So all of your social media content should align with your organization's mission and values. Be clear about what you stand for and use your platform to spread awareness and educate your audience. I think that probably makes perfect sense. Provide value. Offer your audience valuable information, resources, and insights that relate to your organization's cause. This can include educational content, inspiring stories, and updates on your programs and impact. Lori talked about this with, with Curtis, <clears throat> perfect example, but you can also blog about, about the services you provide um, and any, any, any updates. So if you recently received a grant, a federal grant, or if you recently received a grant from another, uh, from any other organization, the Ford Foundation, whatever, um, that would definitely go into a blog. And if it's possible to, and to your social media, if it's possible to relate it back both to the donor, as well as <clears throat> the impact it'll have on, on the people you serve and the community you serve, even better. Be consistent. Maintain a regular posting schedule so your followers know when to expect new content from you. Consistency is key to building trust and a loyal following. Absolutely. But again, it doesn't have to be frequency, but it does have to be quality. If, if you post Monday through Friday, continue posting Monday through Friday. If you only post Monday Wednesday and Friday, also good. If you post seven days a week, whatever, whatever schedule you start with, remain consistent because people will come to look for your posts after a, after a, a, a time. Use storytelling. People connect with stories, so use them to illustrate the impact of your organization. Share real stories of people and or communities that have benefited from your work. We all know what that looks like, and um, that's that that uh, I think is probably self-explanatory. Okay, more guidelines to help you create great content. Engage with your followers. Social media is a two-way conversation. So make sure you respond to comments and messages from your followers. Ask for their opinions, feedback, and suggestions to, to build a stronger community. It's okay to ask them, what do you think I should be doing? Um, so I have a question. Are you all still not able to see my screen? We're not seeing your, we can see your okay. screen, but it's still on social media marketing for nonprofits. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna um, go back to you can, you can see me and I'll just, um, so, because if you can't, if you can't see my screen, I might as well just uh, have you see me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we um, prefer you anyway. Aw, thank you. Um, it is important to ask your community for feedback because if you are if you're in business to help the community, your community is going to be honest with you and tell you what they like, what they don't like, what what resonates with them. So talk to your community and make it that two way conversation. Involve them. They'll if you involve them, they're more likely to involve you in their endeavors. Don't be too salesy especially with nonprofits, you don't need to be salesy because all you really have to do is show the work that you're doing and the, and the value you're providing for the community. You don't have to be salesy. Really, the, the example of, of Curtis is such a good example because he hardly ever talked about the nonprofit. Um, what he talked about was the impact the nonprofit had on him and his addiction. And so you don't have to, and, and especially because he had mentioned that he had relapsed a few times. So really his story is, is, is the sales pitch. It doesn't need to be any more salesy than that. Be visually appealing. Use eye-catching visuals and graphics to capture the attention of your followers. Make sure your images and videos are of high quality and properly formatted for each platform. LinkedIn has a very different platform 
then Instagram, then Twitter, then Facebook, et cetera, obviously then, then TikTok, although none of you use TikTok, which I don't, I don't honestly think you're missing out on anything. Um, I don't think it was, TikTok was really invented for nonprofits. Um, and so make sure your everything is 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 of high quality, but also that the that the graphics and the visuals are attention grabbing. So very high quality, high no no pixelation, but also that they use um, that you're using high quality graphics that will capture the imagination, that will capture people's hearts. Be authentic. Be genuine and authentic in your social media content. I think that's probably one of the most important aspects of social media. You're not here to sell anything. You're not here to uh, to lie. You're here to show the impact that you your organization has on the people and the community it serves. So you you really don't have a choice but to be authentic because because you're not uh, Coca Cola. Coca Cola doesn't need to be authentic because it captures the market share. You have to be authentic because the people in the community you serve demand it, and you demand it because you didn't open up a nonprofit to be Coca-Cola. Let's face it. You opened up a nonprofit because you really, truly want to serve the community, and whether that community is Doctors Without Borders, that's a global one, or whether it's uh, a CUR, or it doesn't matter. So your social media channels, take advantage of the tools that are available. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So we've talked a lot about the first four. YouTube, Lori had a great point earlier about YouTube. Um, that is a great place to showcase your videos. Um, of course, you're also going to do it on your website. You have to have a a place to, to, to host your videos. You have to either host your videos on YouTube or Vimeo or a similar uh, a similar tool. Because if you host it on your website, it'll take up too much bandwidth and your, your, your server will get pretty upset at you. But if you post it on, on YouTube and you, and you embed the link uh, into the, the blog or, or however you're showcasing it, um, YouTube is obviously great for visual impact um, videos and such, reels and, and things of, of that nature. So why use Twitter? Twitter allows nonprofits to reach a large audience in real time with concise messaging. Twitter is not for everybody. Not everybody can speak in 120 characters or less. I can't. I am the most wordy individual I've ever met. And I would have to do 20 Twitter posts to get out what I want to say. And it's not meant for people who have uh, brevity issues. Like but me. Like you, you're, you, you, you and I would not do well on Twitter. I don't, ask Lori. <laughs> not do well. Twitter chats and hashtags can help organizations engage with their community and creates a sense of community. So ever since the hashtag came out, now we've got LinkedIn that, that, that are, they're using it, Facebook's using it, everybody, pretty much all the social media platforms are using it. And you can get a list when you go to, any of your social media tools, you can start to type in the hashtag, hashtag occur, hashtag uh, uh, um, social impact, hashtag social justice. You can you you see whether that that there's already a hashtag created. And if you want, I can talk to this. If anyone has any questions about this later, I can share with you that you can also uh, create hashtags yourself. Um, there are there are tools out there where you can create them yourself and so that follow your mission. I'm going to go through this a little quickly because of my technical difficulties. Um, why use LinkedIn? For a nonprofit, I highly recommend LinkedIn because you are business people, whether you're business people selling, you know, Coca-Cola or your business people selling nonprofit services, you are in business. And so people want to see you. They don't, they, they're not as much interested in your organization as they are interested in you. So whoever is the face of your company, Carmen is drop dead gorgeous. I think she could be the face of her company. Well, she is the face of her company. So that's 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 a, a shining example. If you have a specific message you want to get out, you want to get out there, you have that person be the face of your your community. Um, why use Instagram? Instagram is not in necessarily intended for people in our age group. Uh, in, in when I say our, my age group, Gen X's, Boomers. I don't know that that I really understand 
um, everything there is to know about Instagram because I think I'm just uh, a little too old. I still use the telephone, but Instagram is great because millennials love the visuals. They love the visuals. And with Instagram, it really is about the visuals. It's not about links. It's not about anything else. It's about the visuals. So that one is critical for the millennials and millennials who have money. Why use Facebook? It's one of the most popular social media platforms. That's really the only answer that I need to give you, really, because it's it's one of the first. It's one of the, the most popular. Why use YouTube? I mentioned it before, and it can help increase visibility and attract new followers through search engine optimiza optimization, which Lori spoke to earlier. Example of a story using social media platform to promote freedom is in the approach. This is a visual, so I think what I have to do is make sure that Shai has a uh, my presentation and so so they can share it broadly with all of you because um because the the, the this particular post gives you um it looks it looks at your feed so when when uh somebody goes to the um the um, I'm looking for AACHS's uh news feed they'll see a consistency throughout the their feed they'll see okay this is what this is what AACHS posts about. And so when Shai shares the screen, I mean, shares the presentation, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, social media brand audit. Um, questions you wanna ask yourself. Are your profile images and descriptions consistent? We talked about consistency for branding and to keep your audience engaged. Are you using brand colors and images? Highly important, stay with your, your brand. Always stay with your brand. As soon as you start to, to step out of that lane, your followers will know it. So they like consistency. Are you speaking to your audience? Is every one of your blog posts, every one of your social media posts, is it speaking directly to your audience? If not, then you need to dial it back and figure out where you where to get that, 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 that sweet spot. Are your topics aligned with your mission and vision? Extremely important for nonprofits in particular. I think all marketing, all marketing requires uh, uh, topics being aligned with, with mission and vision, but I think it's most important for nonprofits because this is, this is where you shine. Your mission and your vision is truly where you shine. And so it's everything you're posting aligning with your mission and vision. If it's not, maybe have somebody who understands social media work with you to understand how to do that. And this is the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions, um, I'm at sarah at mobetadigital.com. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And what we're going to do is because it is 11 o'clock and we still haven't done the Q&A, we are going to pause here for those who have other meetings to go to. And, um, and we wanna thank you for having joined us. We're gonna stay on with our speakers a little longer. So if you have questions, hang in there, don't go anywhere. We're gonna stay here and give Lori and Sarah a chance to, um, to answer those questions. I know I myself have a lot of questions too. <clears throat> If you do have to leave, thank you again. And this, um, we want to make sure that um, that you are able to fill out an evaluation form. So if you could just, Shai, if you could just put that up for a second um, yeah. so that folks can fill it out, but don't go anywhere um, if you have questions. And we're going to stay on for a while to address those. So let's just do our evaluation. And the next, um, we're going to do a session on impact uh, next month with our executive director. You don't wanna miss that either. So let's just go with the evaluation for this moment. And then we'll pull Sarah and Lori up side by side. Oh, okay. So go ahead and run this evaluation poll. Um, I did, is it? Is it? It's up. Okay. We're just going to take about three minutes here. Only five questions. Should I take down this slide from the next? 
you can take down whichever makes sense. We want to we want to get the evaluation and we want to just have a brief look at the next slide. Okay. Okay. And it looks like we have a lot of people who do want to ask questions. So we still have 24 of our 28 participants here. Um, Lori and Sarah. Okay, I'm here. And so, so come back in a second. Okay. Okay. So Shai, would you just give us side by side of Lori and Sarah, please? <coughs> and Sarah would be back in a second. Yeah, and so. So Lori, why don't you go ahead and um, address questions? We're going to, you can either unmute yourself. What would you prefer, Lori? We can do that. I did have, I just wanted to say something real quickly. Oh, help yourself. How, how to start. I wanted folks to know, well, what, well, how do I start? Where do I start? I just have four suggestions. Number one, Create a blog for your organization if, and if, you, if you don't have one. If you have one, expand on it in ways that demonstrate impact. Maybe create a schedule for the next 12 months. I think I talked about that. So that's one thing you could do. Like you could do that like starting tomorrow, create a blog. Um, number two, consider using social media. Figure out one of the platforms which will serve you best and start engaging your organization's constituents through weekly Facebook or Instagram content. Um, but don't just create content, tag others, like engage, as Sarah said, have a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Um, this is one thing I want to mention. And again, it, 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 it's, it's what Sarah had mentioned earlier about LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is extremely important, especially if you're an executive director. I think it's a great way to interact with people that are kind of in a similar kind of industry or area of focus that you are. You can actually connect with funders. You can connect with potential funders. So, uh, you know, I would, you know, if I was on there, I would go and I'm just using it as an example, Ford Foundation, Sarah mentioned that. Any of these major foundations, connect with those people, engage with those people so they get to know who you are, who your organization is. Um, number three, make sure your website is updated, make sure it's informative and vibrant and it's fresh and new with images that are recent. And then number four, um, don't forget that there are tools out there to help you refer to the resource sheet at the end of the presentation. It outlines no cost or low cost tools such as Buffer, which will help you and Hootsuite, which will help you set up your, your social media or um, chat GPT, which we just saw or other things. There's, there's so many things out there. Uh, and when you get, and I just wanna say this, when you can achieve all, when you can achieve all of these, you will begin to have an engaging and compelling storytelling mechanism active for your nonprofit, which will not only help enlighten the public to your organization, but will also better position your nonprofit uh, to be found and recognized by funders, donors, volunteers, and others looking to support you. In other words, your nonprofit will be on its way to making a big impression. So that's why I want to make sure I'm clear about that. And last but not least, um, let's answer questions. Thank I you, two questions in the chat. Oh, sorry, Carmen, did you say No, something? I just said thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> um, so Elizabeth Watt um, asked, they said, regarding LinkedIn, are you saying just the org leader needs a profile and not the organization itself? Oh, go ahead, Lori. Yeah, you might have an opinion on this. I, I personally like to think that LinkedIn is best for individuals. That's my opinion. I'm, there are organizations out there. Um, because The reason why I say that is because it is, it is where individuals engage with each other about the activities that they're involved in, the things that they're doing. They're, someone may be speaking at this conference. Someone may be speaking at another conference. They're sharing information between them. Um, but I have seen businesses on there. Sarah, do you have a response? I would agree. I think that it's good to have a business page website, uh, excuse me, a business page um, presence. And you can post certainly anything, um, any of your social media from that page. But I still, I agree with Lori that, um, that the person who's the face of the company, whether that's the executive director or whoever it is, that person should be, uh, 
engaging with people. Now, the way that some, some companies do it, I highly doubt that the CEO of Coca-Cola is engaging people, uh, him, her, them, self. I doubt it. I doubt it. I bet you that there is uh, some, they, they have probably somebody managing their personal account. And in that sense, that that's that's perfectly okay. Um, so long as people feel like they're engaging with that person. And I think that that's, that's important. That's the difference, I think, between LinkedIn and all the other social media platforms. I'm not really sure it's really correct to call LinkedIn a social media. It is in the sense, in the true sense of the word, but in the, the way that it's organized, it's not really social media like Facebook and the others. So I would agree, it's the individual. Can one of you speak about uh, something, Lori, that you mentioned, but we didn't really talk about it, and that's Buffer. Oh, yes. Um, I love Buffer because, so Buffer is a tool that you can use to line up and to organize all of your social media and arrange it all in one time at one time. Let me explain. It's a scheduling tool. Um, so I, I've had uh, clients I've worked with when they, they want me to manage their social media. So I create their Instagram, you know, the content. I'll write, um, you know, uh, some some uh, 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 you know an entry on for for Facebook. Um, I'll do something a little couple of words on tw on Twitter. But what you do, you actually arrange them, you write them, you arrange it, and you schedule it all in one place. You could do it for up to, well, the most I've ever done it was up for a month. You may be able to do it longer than that. But you can arrange, it's a scheduling tool that you can arrange. Buffer, I particularly like, Hootsuite is the more popular one. Hootsuite is a little bit more expensive and it's a little, you're, you're, you're less um, it doesn't have all of the, um, it has some issues with it that, that kind of keep you from being able to do everything you want to do. But in a nutshell, that's what Buffer is. Um, we have another question from the chat. Um, it's from Pierre Richards. Um, and they said, if you have an event occurring six weeks away, when is the optimal time to start advertising? Now, I would really start now. No, no, what he's he's talking about advertising. I guess he's talking about using the tools we're talking about. Yeah, I would start now in this way. I mean, you can kind of you can do it in a way where it's not, hey, we have an event, it's going to be on you know June the 15th. What you could do is kind of cleverly talk about maybe the some issues as it relates to what this event is. Um, when I say issues, and not, not, not necessarily anything bad, it's just, you know, or provide some background information about something. You start to build this engagement, and as you get closer to it, then you're talking about, oh, by the way, the event, it, there's an event that's happening on this day. You kind of engage people along the way. So yes, I would start now. Do you have something, Sarah? I would say that that for events, I agree, six weeks out is good for books. So say the executive director in your company is about to drop a book um, or you've, you yourself have, have written a book. Uh, you probably want to start three months earlier, you know, three months before the, the uh, published date. So you get people, you sort of start teasing people. The book is coming. The book is coming. The book is coming. The book is here. So people are just like, oh my God, the book is here. So you start to build up um, a, a lot of interest. You start to garner some interest in it. And maybe you can post some excerpts about it, um, particularly if it's related to your nonprofit. I think another great tool for marketing for nonprofits is to have someone in the organization write a book about either the work that the nonprofit does or just because the person is associated with the nonprofit. That's a great tool. So um, there you would probably start three months before the, the launch of the book. Or you could just do chat GPT and it'll write a book for you in five minutes. It will. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so forget about all of us journalism majors you yes ladies you wasted we all wasted you wasted so much yes. money and yes. carmen i i'm i'm i know you must be like oh my god because i i know how much love you put into rodney so i just can't even imagine yeah oh dear well you know it's funny that you know uh not to make this about me but with rodney there is a sequel 
dropping in January. Woohoo! And but here's the part that's interesting about the sequel. Uh, for those of you that have seen Rodney, it was illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Uh, the book is called Tasha's Voice. Tasha, um, he began illustrating Tasha, had all the line drawing done, and he passed away of cancer. Everything was done on the book, but now we had no illustrations. Now the book is being illustrated by his protege. So both illustrators are represented oh. in the book that's coming out. Wow. The cover is the protege, but when you open the book, I mean, the cover is Floyd's illustration. You open the book, it's the illustration of the protege, and wow. that takes it all the way through. So it's not just the story. It's about legacy. Yeah. And, and so when you talk about various ways to promote not just the story, but what our community has done together. And in, in even getting the story out to families, yeah. it, I'm getting wonderful ideas. And I know other people are uh, as well. Um, has anybody out there, maybe we could ask um, our, our class the question, has anybody out there used Buffer or Hootsuite? I don't know. Uh, Shai, you're going to have to tell us if hands are raised because we don't have that view. No hands. Okay. So nobody has used it will change your life. I'm telling it you, it will. It will. I mean, I I've used most of the social media platforms the the excuse me, the tools to post to platforms. And um, I agree with Lori. I mean, I've been using Hootsuite for a long time. I'm not a fan personally. I like Buffer. Uh, I like Sprout Social, but it's very expensive. A couple of them are very expensive, but do have some integrated tools that some of the other ones don't. So you do sort of get what you pay for. But if your goal is to just post uh, to social media, a lot of them integrate very seamlessly with the pla the platforms that uh, that Lori and I recommend for your for your nonprofit, and they so you can post reels and stories directly to Buffer. You don't have to go to Instagram, and and the reason this is important is because Instagram is is all about the phone. It, you 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 post everything from the phone, and I don't know about you, but I have. 60 year old eyes and I really don't want to see my my phone I want to go and go to a, a social media tool and I want to be able to see it on my big screen and post it that way so social media tools uh, are are really truly the bomb they and they can save you so much time you know when it is at one thing too buffer is relatively free you mm -hmm. can use it for free for I I never paid for it yeah, for up to three channels. And I think for, for one user, I think it's, or maybe even four channels. So check, you've got to check it out. You have also, to check it out. Yeah. I was going to say, and the last thing I'm, I'm going to, were there any other questions? Yeah, yes, I, I wanted Lori. to ask if oh. other people had questions. Go ahead. Yes, Laurie. Yes. Um, I, I got a little stuck on number four on getting started. What Could you repeat that again? Sure. Oh. Number four on the last part of getting started. Yeah, make sure your website is updated. Make sure, remember I showed that, that, that slide with the broken, you know, they had the broken links and things. Just make sure your website is vibrant. It is fresh. It's new. There's not, it looks new. You know that when you go to it, it's, it's been updated because it's, it's reflects something new, you know, you, was, you know. Oh, okay. I, I appreciate Was that number five? That was number four on my uh, list. I had I had one, two, three, four things to get started. Okay, I appreciate that. Then the other oh, I'm lady. Sorry. No, uh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. Number four is don't forget that there are tools out there to help you. Refer to the ref, refer to the resource sheet that's at the very end of my presentation. I haven't shown that to you, but you're going to get it, um, which outlines no cost and low cost tools such as Buffer and, who, and what have you. And so that was what my number four was. Don't forget that there's tools out there to help you. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. And then the other lady, what what was your email address? Sarah. Miss Sarah. Sarah. Sarah at MoBeta something? MoBeta Digital. Digital. Okay. 
Facebook.com. I appreciate that. And the other thing, the website for this whole, I mean, to be able to look at this whole meeting, what is that? Um, what do you Shy? call it? The website address that? for this conference here? Yeah, I'm going to, I'll post it in the chat right now. So everybody has. I appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And then the last thing I'll say, if you guys have any questions at all, you just went, hey, Lori, I remember I was at the at the presentation, blah, blah, blah. Just shoot me an email. Lori, Lori why don't you give yours again? I'll, Lori, I'll, I'll post everyone's right now. Feel free to, just feel free to reach out if you have a question, seriously, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. And I have an announcement for everybody. Um, and uh, Shai, I will need your assistance on this because I can never remember how this is done. But what we'd like to do is if your organization has a request, and particularly if you're a faith-based organization, because we are, we are focusing primarily on faith-based organizations for the one-on-one -on -one technical assistance um, for this. But if you're a faith-based organization and you would like to apply for assistance with all of your storytelling and media, um, please send us an email, Shy. How is that done? So they can also, um, I just posted in the chat, if you have any general questions, please email at us at info at occurnow.org. So you can also email info at occurnow.org if you're interested in that. Okay, so that would be one-on-one -on -one consulting. And what happens is that you basically get a thousand dollar grant for Lori to work with you in getting started with some of the things we've been talking about today. So if these are, if, if, if you know what you wanna do and you're ready to take it to the next level, we're not talking about from scratch, we're talking about all the things that we covered today and how this would apply to your organization. If you want some assistance with this, please hear me. You can apply for a grant to get Lori to help you one on one with all the things we've been talking about today. So make sure that you avail yourself of that. Okay. All right. So if there are no further questions, going once, going quiet, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions.